Fighter 751 aircraft has been garnering a lot of attention, I've noticed here on the main road. It's this handsome little aircraft right behind me, which is a, a replica, I'll call it. And we looked at this airplane once before, but it was bare bones then, which is nice. We like to see how it looks underneath the skin, but now it's all looks like it's all ready to fly. Is it flying? We'll ask those questions in a moment. I'm Dan Johnson speaking to Sam Watrous of Scale Birds, and he's going to tell me more about this P-36 here. Yes, sir. So it's not flying yet. We, not yet. Okay. It kind of got interrupted by the show. And so <laughs> within a few story. weeks, within a few weeks, she'll be flying. We've got to still have uh, take her back home and get her inspected uh, in a couple weeks, and then she's ready to fly after that. Okay, cool. All right. So describe the airplane for me a little bit. Tell me what you're trying to achieve with it. Right. So what we're doing with this is it's a 60% scale airframe of a P36 Hawk, uh, but it's also a P40 if you put a different engine and cowling on it. That's how I noticed you had it both ways on the website. Yes. But they're not quite the same, so that's how you're handling that. But it's it's really it's a sport airplane. It's a sport plane just like a Sonic or an RV or uh, that looks like a warper. So its main mission is for fun. Right? So tell me how you went about doing this because to my eyes, now I'm not an expert like you are, but to my eyes, this was pretty darn authentic, albeit small. Otherwise the detail looks like a hard well, that's that's my son's amazing. input, right? Is that right? Okay. He, he's a What's your son's name? Is Scott. 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 Scott and, Watcher. And he's an industrial designer. And so he's got the eye for detail. And so we went from this not just from pure engineering standpoint, but also from the design standpoint. And so it's a little proportionally out of scale, but you have to because the people aren't scaling down, they're <laughs> scaling up. So we've made the the cockpit as roomy as an RV and um, and then we went from there uh, the engines that we chose uh, are all light sport and sport plane engines you're in the 80 to 150 horsepower range um, except with one difference than most people use they're around <laughs> well we're also a Werner dealer and uh, we had to turn this from a P40 project into a P36 Hawk project because Werner Motor out of the Czech Republic sells some beautiful little radial engines. And we bought one for our project, and then they asked us to be a dealer, and we've been doing great. Excellent, good. Doing great. Werner's a very well established brand, been around for many decades. The project, I believe, is an all kit project, is it not? It's going to be, yes, okay. sir. Yeah, no, I'm leaving it up. Yeah, this, this is a so prototype. You sell it to a customer. But what will the customer receive from you? What does what he or she start with? Okay, so we haven't finalized our standard kit yet because we're still working on uh, like the first batch of 10 betas. And those betas are going to be sub-assemblies like a lot of kit planes companies do. Where we have, you know, the tail empennage will be one sub-assembly. We'll get that out to you first. Then it'll be the outboard wings with the ailerons so that you can do all your fabric work at the same time. And then we're going to provide the betas finished spars the center section mostly done, uh, ready to receive the landing gear. Uh, the fuselage structure will be a uh, kit, and then we'll have a finishing kit as well. Uh, and that'll be the cowling, a uh, lot of fiberglass fairings, the landing gear, the canopy, uh, and lots of little details. But you're going to provide all these elements for people. You yes. Know? They don't have to go out and like fabricate the right. metal into shapes. And right. We're going to provide like probably 90% of the metal will be pre-formed. Okay. Right. All the, the ribs, the skin panels are going to be all uh, drilled out and, and cut okay, to size. Okay. So you'll have holes already, pre matched holes already done? Right. Okay. So that makes that makes building a lot easier for those that don't know. It's called precision matching. Yes. Uh, hole matching. And that's very helpful. But, uh, is underneath what I see here, is there a steel structure inside of it? It's an aluminum truss frame. Aluminum. Okay. And, uh, and um, how is it? How are the elements attached? Are they welded or are they bolted or what? They're they're bolted and riveted together. Just okay. plates. And the reason we're using that is it's real easy to build on your on a, on a table. Okay. So right. you're catering to the home builder with exactly. This type of it's real easy to put together. It's like you can build a Sonex. You can build a, a Zenith. You 
can definitely build this. Okay. It just takes a little bit longer because there's a lot more details. Yeah, I'm just looking it's at easy. this uh, straight piece here. Here's yes, one sir. panel, a second panel, a third panel, yeah. a fourth panel. Right. So. Because that's what it takes to make that compound shape there, I'm sure. Right. But still, that takes a little more riveting than if it's just a piece of uh, right. fiberglass there. Right. And, it, and But it's all real simple to do. So what would a, what would a builder invest in time? Assuming you had the whole kit ready for them and didn't have to wait. Or she didn't have to wait. Well, you got it all the pieces all at yeah. once. About what would it take somebody to put this together? We're expecting it to be about thirteen to fifteen hundred hours. Okay. It's not a quick this is not a quick build kit. But it's also not a twenty year project. Which a lot of the replicas have taken a long time and they, they just never get finished. So our goal was to have something readily buildable like like any of the other now, this is not your only model either. You've got other models, do you not? We are planning to do other models, and that's why we have a frame on the inside of this, is because now we can put a different shape on here for fuselage, and now it's a zero. Or it's a Hellcat. Ah, okay. Right? Or a Buck Wolf. There's a lot of interest. I mean, I, I see the people, just the ones looking at us right now. A bunch of people, they're not looking at us, they're looking at this airplane. Right. This is an Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we've. Uh, Taken a while to get here, but uh, uh, we're all volunteers so far on the project. The only guy making money is the welder. Uh, so, <laughs> a labor of love. Yeah, it's a labor really of love. Is, so. But, but uh, quickly, we've already got uh, five confirmed beta builders. Is that right? We had like ten at Oshkosh, but we're taking a little long, and then we had to re redo our landing gear, and that's just taken us a little bit too long. Yeah, people do get impatient. I understand that, yeah. but uh, still, you're getting close like changes. That probably won't happen much anymore. I want you to step a little bit this way, and I want to just point out some detail here. Sure. It looks like well, this doesn't actually move. Does it? It's it's ground adjustable. Oh, it, oh we can so, close so them. Move. We can open them up a little yeah, bit exactly. more. I'm guessing in the original models, though, this was an openable cowl. Yes. So yeah, we that's have what a, these little spacers are in here for to keep yes. the air trapped. Yes. Yeah, so because when it's more of that authenticity, you, you don't see this when it's right. closed. Sure, of course not. Right, right. But as it opens up, it's a high sheet. Flowers out, right? right. right. Little yeah. things like that. We, we 3D printed the front of our gun, <laughs> just like a 36 oh, does. Oh, you know, we're going to have a, a better authentic spinner on here. And How much power you got over here? So this is a this Burner 7, one. and that's 125 horsepower. 125 horsepower. With a single seater, what's the, what's the empty weight? 850 on the prototype. Geez, you're going to go off like a home sick angel. Oh, yeah. All right, very cool. Uh, Sam, that's a lot of great information about it. We want to direct people to where they can learn a lot more. Those who want to learn more, there are many to do. So where do we find you on the website? www.scalebirds.com. All right, very good. We've written about this before, done videos about it before. There'll be more of that, you can be sure. Lots of other affordable, affordable aviation available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Sam Watrous and me here at Sun Club. Thank you. Here at Sun and Fun, we run into one of our good friends from another show. I'm Dan Johnson talking to Chris Collins of the Midwest LSA Expo. It's great to see you here, Chris. Great to see you guys, too. You found me <laughs> trying to escape. Caught you walking by, but we yeah. had to ask some questions about the upcoming Midwest LSA Expo. And you found the right time on the calendar. We know that the last few years have been excellent. So. Worked out pretty good. Yes, excellent. So coming up again this year, you're doing it again, of course. Um, uh, give me a couple of names that are coming to the show for you. Oh, uh, well, for instance, last night I was looking through the new AOPA magazine and turned to the very back and there was an ad for Bristol and it actually had Osh and then MVN on it. So all that's right. pretty exciting, you know, pretty to cool. read that in your motel room. You, you know, bet, so, that's very nice. So all the guys that are there, um, you know, of course, Jabiru and, and Zenith and UL Power. I've got to mention Robert on UL Power. Of course. The head of the show. Um, just the, the list is long. Um, it's hard to come up with right now on camera sure, nervous right. like this in front of everybody <laughs> with all the AOPA people across the hall looking at us. Yeah, that's right. There is a flock of people back there and they're watching to see what they're um, You know, just trying to bring it off the top of my mind, the Aeroprac guy. Yeah, we know we're leaving some people know, out, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm but, gonna, uh, they'll all be mad at me. But the point is you got a good crop of uh, airplanes that will come again and uh, we'll do the show for those days. And 
for for what uh, Video Man Dave here and I do at the show. Yours is one of the very, very best for us to come and do in-flight videos of airplanes and so forth. So another reason for people to come and exhibit at your show, beside the public they reach out to, is the opportunity to get some attention. I get asked time and time again what's new for the show, and there really isn't anything new. What we do best is giving the customer access to the skies. No hassles whatsoever. You and just go it, fly. It is the easiest place. Yes. There's a lot of great shows, and I'm not putting mm -hmm. any of the other ones down because they're, we appreciate what they're doing too, but your airport is so wide open, so easy to get out and go take people for a flight. And you know what? Shows like this are great. We love Sun and Fun. We love Oshkosh. But there's so many people, it's hard to kind of get around, and you can't get somebody's attention. If I walk up here, we're standing right in front of Continental Motors. If I walked in there right now, I'd have to wait to talk to somebody, right. maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then I kind of go, well, you know, I think I'll walk somewhere else, and I never end up talking to them. Exactly. That doesn't happen at your show. No, not at all. It, you, you have the undivided attention of all the, the exhibitors there, and comparison shop and comparison fly. And I'm going to brag on Chris a little bit because everybody likes to go to the show, partly because of this man right here, the team you run. I know you got a bunch of people mm -hmm. that help you. It's not yep. just you doing everything, but you're out there, I'll say cracking the whip. You're a much nicer guy than that to be a whip cracker, but you keep everything moving. It happens. You're so accommodating. Everybody likes to go to the show just because they get well treated, you know, and good things go where they're well treated. We have that Midwestern atmosphere. Everybody is excited to see the guests, and, and it's just an easy thing for us to do. And an army of volunteers wearing orange shirts like the one I have on and cater to all the needs. And you do that very well. For folks that don't know about it, give us a position on the map where Mount Vernon sure. is. Because a lot of people don't know where Mount Vernon so, is, but they know some other places. The southern end of the state, the intersection of I-57 and I-64, equidistant between St. Louis, Missouri, and Evansville, Indiana. Okay. You know, so we have a, a southern climate more than the northern part of the state. Yeah, and it's Weather's a, usually early pretty good. September mm -hmm. has usually been very good, not so burning hot like it can be down right. here, and yet nice weather for flying, which is, of course, the main attraction. Uh, how about from Chicago? Chicago's about four and a half hours okay, from and the southern Okay, that's pretty end. much straight mm -hmm. north, straight right? Straight south. Or you're straight south to, yes. from them. So for that huge population there. But basically, anybody around the whole Midwest, you're very central. Yeah, you're not eight, that far. We're eight hours drive from 50% of the United States population. Is that right? Yeah, I don't that's know one if I've ever heard that. Economic fact, but... development stats that ah, they, okay. yeah, people like me uh, spurn out. <laughs> um, someone wants to fly in to uh, commercially fly into St. Louis, it's just an hour and 20 minute drive over to us. That's really what I've easy. often done. So yes. and easy to get vehicles and it's zipped right over. It's not bad drive at all. And if you do fly your general aviation aircraft, we have shuttles to and from the hotels. And you got free. a lot of hotels there and they're yeah. reasonably mm -hmm. priced. So you're not going to spend a fortune. And then we also have camping on the field, which is free. We have showers on the field and we're very equipped for things like this. Beautiful. And so what happens if a whole bunch of airplanes fly in? You got any room for them all? Plenty of room. Plenty <laughs> of room. Got 10 acres of concrete ramp space, and then we got a whole other end on the other end, end of the airport that we can position airplanes and tram everybody to the show. Great stuff. So once again, Midwest LSA Expo, it's now part of the aviation calendar. All right, give us a web address where we can find out more and get the dates again and like that. MidwestLSAExpo.com. All right, Chris, we're glad we caught you walking by here. You're out talking to vendors and mm -hmm. trying to encourage more people yet to come to the show. That's correct. All right, well, that's good. So all you folks that are watching, uh, early September, there's no other good shows right then. Uh, come, come to the Midwest LSA Expo at Mount Vernon, Illinois, an hour east of St. Louis, approximately, and uh, catch that show. You get to go for flights there like you basically can't do anywhere else. We get to do that. We love that. But all the individuals that come get to do the same thing. Yes. Good stuff, Chris. Keep on, keep on doing good. Thank you, Dan. So for more about the Midwest LSA Expo, I always give it lots of coverage because I really love the show. And there's always so much to do there for me that uh, you can find a lot of that and all kinds of affordable aviation on ByDanJohnson.com.